Okay, now let's talk about seafood. For all you anglers that like to bring it home and grill it up on your deck, this is how we do it. I've given you a few examples here. These are black tiger shrimp. They're one of my favorites. They contain a lot of flavor. You can use any other, Ecuadorians, white. When you go to your fishmonger or your supermarket, they're gonna, they're gonna have a sign that says either medium, large, extra large, jumbo. These would be considered jumbo, and you can buy even bigger shrimp. Here at the restaurant, we use this size shrimp. The black tigers, you're gonna see that, they, that they're gonna come to you just like this unless you buy shrimp that's already clean. I prefer buying shrimp that is not cleaned already. I'd rather clean it myself. Two strokes, I'm holding it by the tail. My thumb, I take off the first section and I pull legs with it. Then I take the second section, same exact thing, pulling legs with it and my shrimp is clean. The only next step that is necessary is that you have to devein the shrimp and their digestive tract is along the back and all I do is just run the, my knife down the back of the shrimp and split it open, just like this. And there's a small vein that comes out and my shrimp is clean. These are farm-raised catfish. The farm-raised catfish, they're beautiful fillets. These are between seven to nine ounces. It's a very clean fish. Belly fat's been removed, and these are all set for grilling. Here I have some Chilean salmon that I just got into the restaurant. We pick up fresh fish every few days. This Chilean salmon, I've cut it down into six ounce pieces. And if you're ever concerned about what portion or what size, when you go to buy a big fish at the supermarket, usually proteins, fish, chicken, meat, six ounces is perfect. So you can go right to your fishmonger and say, you know what, I love that piece of salmon or I love that piece of swordfish and ask them, could you cut it down into six ounce portions for me so that it's already set. You don't have to have a scale at home and that's part of their job. They'll make sure it's ready for you so you can get down to the good part of getting on your deck and growing. The other fish that I've added, which is a very pop popular fish, it's a Pacific tilapia. This is a beautiful fillet. Tilapia to me, it's a very simple fish, but it's also the fish that has replaced flounder in this world, and it's great for grilling because it's light, it takes on other flavors, and it has just enough texture so that it's always fork tender, takes on other flavors, and it stands up to grilling well. And I think that's very, very important. With all these dishes, we're gonna do a very simple grilled shrimp. We're gonna do a catfish creole, all right? We're going to do salmon, which is kind of like a Caribbean jerk style, and these are all toppings, very, very easy. And there are things that you can put together and you don't have to have a recipe. It's all about making very simple grilled fish with salt and pepper and then putting your favorite topping on. It could even be a jardinier that you buy from the supermarket or a pico de gallo that you buy from the Mexican aisle in your favorite supermarket. And just top your fish with that and a small amount of butter and you're all set. And the tilapia, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a small bit, bit, bit of tico, pico right on top with some cilantro, some onions and tomatoes, and you're all set. All from your grill, finished plate beautiful. Let's get started. Shrimp cook very fast. So I'm doing them on my cool zone. Catfish. Going up to my hot zone. And believe it or not, I want a little more oil because cat is delicate. So I just hit with a little bit more oil. It's okay, that small amount of flame is all right. With the fish, whether it's your rag or a spray, I like the oil again. Now my salmon, and look here, it is very important. This is the skin side of the salmon, where the salmon fillet, where the skin has been removed. See that dark spot? That's where the skin was connected. The other side that I've seasoned is the flesh or the bone side. I always cook flesh or bone side down first, because that's gonna be the side that's facing up when I serve it with those pretty grill marks. So once again, skin side. Flesh side. I cook flesh side first. My tilapia, I'm going kind of halfway in the middle. A fish cooks much quicker. It's something that you have to remain attentive to. And if all goes right, again, you won't have any sticking. So, first thing I'm going to do with fish, I work with spatula. And you can see 
When I do the salmon, I'm under, no fish stuck to the grill. One more time, I'm under, no fish stuck to the grill. And here's where I cheat a little bit. I'm gonna hit the other side of my fish with a little bit of oil, so when I turn it over, that I know that it's not gonna stick and it's gonna take on the proper flavor and act the way I want it to act, because this fish does have personality. Catfish, going under. Catfish are tough. I'm not going for diamond patterns on these, I'm just turning them over. My tilapia, we're gonna get adventurous. We're gonna try to get some diamond patterns. Remember I told you, that's a firmer flesh fish, so it should work out well. No fish is stuck to the grill. Diamond pattern. My salmon's on a hot spot. I'm pulling that down now, because I know that it's got those perfect diamond patterns that we're looking for. Now, if you really wanna show off on your deck, when you can pull this off and your fish doesn't stick, you are now a Zen Jedi Master Grill Freak. I'm gonna get ready with my plates. Again, so we've done the same steps, the before, the during, the after, the after sitting there with the plates. We're gonna pull our tilapia and get it turned. Once again, we're looking for that diamond pattern. And I'm taking my salmon, because I had it in the hot spot the whole time, and I'm going cool now. So I've got the marks that I want on the outside. My shrimp, you notice we haven't talked about it much. It's been sitting over there, because I never want to rush the shrimp, and I don't want to burn the skewers, the bamboo skewers I have them on. So now, I'm going to take the same shrimp, and I really don't need the spatula. I'm just lifting these sticks. I'm just turning it over. And they're looking like they're just about ready to go. My catfish, and now I'm taking my shrimp, I'm gonna move it to a different cool spot because I want some place to work with my catfish and get it away from the heat. So my catfish are coming over to a cooler spot. My tilapia, you notice I have the heavier side because the belly side is thinner. The heavy side is closer to the heat. So again, knowing your hot zones, your cool zones, knowing where the grill is gonna have the most heat or be the most volatile and really sear a lot, I'm working all of those areas and thinking about where they are as I'm grilling so that I get the best results. So knowing your grill, knowing your equipment, just like you know your deck, means everything. We're gonna let this stuff sit here happy and let it just kind of cook on its own at a lower temperature while the actual natural juices inside the fish cook the inside of the fish so that it's perfect. And we're looking for it to get a little beyond that pearlescent point where it is opaque, but not dry. Okay, we are done grilling our fish and we're at the best part of the meal, I think. And that's really the composition and putting it together. There are so many ways to cook proteins, but there's even more, I say, when you're just talking about fish. Because fish takes on the flavors of all the things that you do. So we just cooked four different types of fish, and I decided to just throw together four different things that I think work well with them, still allowing the fish to taste good, and still having some toppings that really stand out while maintaining the integrity of the center of the plate item. Over here we have our tomato bruschetta, and the tomato bruschetta is, is gonna be going over, going over our chicken and we're also gonna be using it for one of our fish dishes, so it's very, very versatile. This is a lemon habanero pico de gallo. It's got a little bit of heat, a little bit of citrus, cilantro, fresh herbs, flat leaf Italian parsley, some scallions, some beefsteak tomatoes, a little bit of red onion, fresh lemon jus, and a little bit of chopped jalapeno, excuse me, habanero peppers inside. You can add as much as you like. Remember, it's the hot one of the hots. This is one of the sauces that we use here at Zachary's Barbecue for several things. It goes with shrimp and it's an awesome addition. It's a little bit of Asia, it's a little bit of the American South, and what it is, it's a ginger pineapple sauce where we actually take like a red chili, a red chili sauce that we do, reduce it, making it with a syrup with a little bit of honey and a little bit of soy and some Asian products, and then we add grilled pineapple. 
to the mixture. So it's a little bit of heat and a little bit of sweet. And this over here is a core sauce that we use here. It's very similar to an Italian tomato sauce, but we call, we call it our tomato creole, which is done with peppers, celery, onions, which are the trinity in creole cooking. And we cook them down with fresh plum tomatoes, roasted garlic, and basil, which will also go with one of our dishes. But remember, it's as big as your imagination could possibly be. So when you're out there practicing on your grill and you're having fun, that's when you're out there figuring it out. It's kind of like spring training until you have all your friends and family out. You see something on TV, you walk by something in the aisle, you had something that was interesting somewhere else, don't be afraid to try it. That's the other beauty of having, having a deck. That's a place where you can take your time, have some fun, and really experiment with foods and figure it all out before you really put the love into it and give it to your friends and family. They'll be talking about you and your deck for a long, long time.